Hey kids, Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now, back in the year 2000, it was the height of the World Superbike Series and Ducati was taking all the wins with the Ducati 996. Honda wasn't very pleased about this, so they came up with a homologation special. This bike, the VTR 1000 SP1. If you stick around and stay tuned, I'll tell you all about it. Okay, so the Ducati 996 was, of course, an L-twin, uh, whereas the Honda race bike of the time was a V4. So what, I hear you cry? Well, under the rules of World Superbike at the time, L-twin models had a 250cc capacity advantage, and Honda were pretty sure this is why the Ducatis continued to win. So Honda decided they needed to teach Ducati a lesson and develop their own V-twin race bike. So that's what they did. They took their existing uh, V-twin road motorcycle, which at the time was the uh, VTR 1000 Firestorm. Here's a picture of that bike. They took that frame and basically developed a brand new race engine for that machine. And they came up with this, the SP1. So Honda had all sorts of fun and games getting the SP1 engine to work in the VTR 1000 frame, but they did make it work, and after just three years of development, this bike hit the showrooms in the year 2000. It cost at the time £10,000, which was a whole £1,000 less than the 996 cost. Take that, Ducati. So how did the SP1 fare in the race series? Well, in 2000, this actually won the World Superbike Series, which is incredible. However, it was seen as a little bit of a hollow victory because the main competitor, Carl Fogarty, uh, riding on the uh, 996, unfortunately had a crash, which took him out for the season. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, that was seen, as I say, as a little bit of a hollow victory. The next year, 2001, Ducatis were back. They won World Superbike on the 998. But the year after that, the uh, SP1 won the championship again. So that sort of cemented its place in motorcycling history. OK, so, so much for how the bike came about. How's it ride today? Let's uh, get togged up and go and take it for a ride. OK, so here we are on the uh, mighty VTR 1000 SP1. Been on the bike literally five minutes. And I tell you, for a 20-year-old bike, it's absolutely gorgeous. I've been lucky enough in the last year to ride a couple of uh, older sports bikes. I've ridden uh, my mate Linden's Fireblade from about 1993, I think that was and I also rode the Ducati 916 as well last year, both older sports bikes and I was surprised with them how amazing they were to ride and this is exactly in that same category, it feels tight as you like I have to say nothing about the ride on this would make you think that it was a 20 year old bike, incredible but let's treat this as I would a modern day review and just talk you through some of the things that you notice on the bike so the first thing, let's get the visor down actually, hopefully you can hear me okay First thing, seating position, obviously a sporty seating position. The legs are tucked up in a sporty tuck, very similar to my Panigale actually. But it's not actually as uncomfortable as that. I'm not as extreme tucked over or bent over, so my back's not uh, really contorted. I haven't got lots of weight on my wrist. So I have to say there's a lot of room on the seat though. At the moment I'm sitting uh, right forward on the tank. What's going on here? But I can slide back if you're in a sort of racing crouch and get right down low. There's loads of room on the seat. So even if you're a big fella, I'm not, then uh, you'd be all right on this. The seat is very hard though. It's basically just a bench. Mirrors work really well on here. No blurry vision or anything like that. And the brakes, I have to say, absolutely incredible. engine itself, this V-twin, lovely and smooth, it's got a classic V-twin sound to it, and no terrible thumpy vibrations or anything like that, and so far, even though I've only been riding the bike for a short period, it seems quite easy to ride, my experience with some of these uh, older sports bikes is they can be absolute beasts, but this seems alright, the bike feels physically quite large, in that the fuel tank feels quite wide between my knees, and I'm having trouble uh, gripping hold of it actually, the seat's a little bit slippery so you move around on the bike quite a bit unintentionally but that if you're a good rider, which I'm not, that would probably actually help to hang off the bike and so on if you're on a track or something but all we need to do is find a slightly uh, faster road to open her up a little bit no electronics on this bike of course, all manual, no ABS or quick shifters or anything like that beautiful on these corners really sweet gearbox as well it has to be said no terrible wind blast fairings doing a good job and suspension is just in that sweet spot it's not uh, rock hard it's, although it might look quite bounced at the moment because this is a very bumpy road but it's not so hard that it's 
shaking the fillings out of my teeth. Just nice for a sports bike. Dash on this LCD, which I'm a little bit surprised about, probably ahead of its time. I love the idiot lights though, I don't know if you can see the, uh, the indicator light there. The way that flashes, it just reminds me of an old-fashioned aeroplane cockpit, I love that. Right, let's just open her up a bit here. Twenty years and she loses none of her thrust, I have to say. Very, very nice. I'll tell you what, new sports bikes are all very well and all very lovely and look great and everything else has got the latest technology. But if you just want the basic sports bike feeling, you know, the parts that make riding bikes interesting, the engine, the sound, even the riding position. So they really haven't come on much in 20 years. This is just a beautiful bike to ride. Definitely out of those three that are older sports bikes I've ridden, the Fireblade, the 916 and this, this is the nicest in terms of handling, comfort and, dare I say, it looks, I think. Yeah, terrific stuff, I like this. What a beautiful day to be out riding. Right, what I need to do is pull up and uh, I'll just uh, walk around the bike in the usual way, talk you through the spec. Now I'm just coming up to Checkers here. I'm not going to park outside, exactly outside Checkers, because I've fallen and fell there before, but I think I might be able to just come up the side here without attracting the attention of the police. Let's hope so anyway. Let's uh, stick her up here. Show you around the machine. Uh, removal van's in at Checkers. What's going on there? It's popper there in the sunshine. How easy is it to find neutral? Quite easy. Stand. Easy enough. Alrighty. Okay, let's turn that one off for now. <laughs> okay, here she is. Honda VTR1000 SP1. What an absolute beauty in the sunshine. Alright, let me get the uh, other camera out and I'll talk you through the spec in the usual way. Okay, here we are then, the uh, Honda VTR1000 SP1, resplendent in this uh, red paint scheme in the sunshine here in beautiful Buckinghamshire. All right, the specs then, let's uh, talk you through. So the engine then, uh, 90 degree liquid cooled V-twin uh, of 999cc, not much to see here because it's covered up by the fairing. What is of interest are these side mounted radiators, look, and the big opening there, which is, uh, which is amazing. One of the differences, of course, I talked about the Ducati uh, 996 being a V-twin, of course that they talk about as an L-twin, but it's basically the same thing. Uh, power wise on the uh, dyno uh, this put out 122 brake horsepower although some specs I saw said uh, 132 horsepower at 9500 rpm so compared to today's 200 horsepower plus bikes uh, okay not that powerful but it certainly doesn't feel slouchy of course as a sports bike it's, uh, it feels absolutely beautiful on the road. Torque wise 75 ish foot pounds of torque there you go, you can see a bit uh, of the engine here and there's that other side mounted radiator as well. Uh, 8,000 RPMs in the old money, 102 newton metres of torque. Uh, brakes wise, on the front uh, we've got these Nissin calipers. Uh, four pots on a 320mm disc. Interestingly non-radial, nor are they Brembo's. They probably weren't a thing on premium bikes in those days. It seems these days all bikes have them, but these work perfectly well as you uh, saw. Uh, and on the back we've got, uh, this looks like a single pot Nissin as well. And that's on a 220mm disc. Uh, suspension wise, the front is uh, got 43mm shower forks and these are fully adjustable. You can see the uh, manual adjusters on the top of the yoke here, which is uh, quite fun. They're pretty damn beefy. Uh, what else to say about it? Seat height on here, 813mm. It uh, doesn't feel too high for me. I can get my feet flat on the floor as a shorty at 5 foot 8, so no problem there. Weight of this bike, 199 kilograms dry which doesn't sound super duper light does it but it doesn't feel heavy at all when you're riding it but uh, yeah relatively heavy I suppose again compared to today's sports bikes tank capacity on here 18 litres or 4.8 gallons and uh, I understand the fuel economy on this is absolutely shocking something like 80 miles out of a tank so uh, fuel economy certainly isn't a thing uh, if you bought one of these brand new they were 10 grand as I mentioned uh, which was a grand less than the uh, equivalent Ducati uh, I had a quick look on eBay and uh, 
on Auto Trader before I did the review, and you can pick one of these up now, like this, in the region of about £7,000. So if you're interested in a uh, classic sports bike, might be one worth looking at. Alrighty, okie dokie, let's jump on her then and uh, ride her some more. Uh, as you probably know, if you've been, if you've been stopped before, uh, yeah. any member of the public we see near to the grounds that are, are using um, mobile devices to take pictures or videos, we just come up a quick chat. Yeah, no problem. So what are you up to? Well, I uh, I make bike reviews on YouTube, oh, cool. hence the helmet and camera while I'm... I thought I saw a camera on your bike. And yes. I, I, could, I thought you were like, narrating from that paper. Yeah, so I was uh, basically reading the spec from here making a video with a film with the doodah and it'll go up later but uh, yeah this is a particularly special bike I was going to say I was going to put putting you on the spot tell me a little bit about the bike well this is a VTR 1000 this is the SP1 which was the bike that won the World Superbike Series in 2000 and well 2000 actually 2000. and this was Honda's response to the Ducati 996 oh, okay. uh, hey Colin Edwards rode it. You've got it spot on. Yeah, indeed. So it's quite a quite an important bike as far as Honda's concerned. Response to the Ducati or response to Carl Fogarty's dominance? Which one was it? Well, <laughs> my understanding is response to Ducati. But and the fact the thing is it won in 2000, but it only won because Carl Fogarty came off the Ducati. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it did win again in 2002. Uh, so. It, but I think Fogarty was out of it by then, but there we go. But it's a lovely bike, isn't it? Very, very nice. Yeah, nice looking bit of kit. So what do you do? Do you just sort of lease them and then do the, or hire them? And well, this one has been lent to me by a company, uh, Bennett's, you see on the uh, thing there, oh, okay. who sponsor me. So I'm... Oh, so they sponsor your videos? Or? Yes, I, I have a few sponsors and various manufacturers lend me bikes to ride. And okay. uh, yeah. YouTube, is it? Or? Yeah. Channel, what's the channel called? It's called the Missenden Flyer. The Missenden Flyer? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a pilot, you see, as well. Oh, okay. So, and I live in Missenden, so it kind of works on multiple yeah. levels. All right, brilliant. Yeah. Well, no, crack on. It's just like, like I said, we, we like to come out and have a little bit of a chat whenever we see someone filming nearby or whatever, but no, it's all good. No worries. Like said, you're, you're away from the site, you're out of the road, that's all good. Yeah, I'm done now, so no worries anyway, okay, but uh, well, okay, well, keep cool in this weather. Oh, well, we'll good right. to see you. I'll turn around and be out your hair. Oh, what's its top whack? Not a lot, actually. Well, I say that, I don't know, I've never ridden it at top whack, but uh, I, I would think it would top out about 150, something like that. Oh, okay. It's only got 130 brake horsepower, which compared to today we get 200 brake horsepower, yeah, yeah. nothing. So it doesn't feel that uh, that sporty compared to modern ones, but no but still a bit, still a quick thing, I mean, compared to a car, obviously. Wow, well, I've got the 2.3 litre Focus ST. Yeah. And that was 155, so I'd do the bike. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never get to 155. <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. You quicker than I was well, right? that's part of the problem, is there's nowhere really that you can ride these sort of bikes. This is why they're not really popular anymore, because, yeah. you know, these days, what's the point? You just can't ride them. Track, yeah, exactly. It's a track day thing, great fun. Right, I'll get on, because I'm going to cook. Cheers. Okay, so much for not being, uh, having me collar felt by the police. <laughs> I was just about to jump back on the bike, and uh, Black Van turned up. But as ever, lovely guys and uh, interested in the bikes. And in fact, uh, the one chap I was talking to knew all about this machine, or seemed to, so that was good. Anyway, uh, seems to be its policy that if you stop anywhere in this vicinity and get your phone out, they come and uh, feel your collar. So I'll have to stop doing that. Right, let's move around. Good chance to see what the turning circle's like. Not bad, actually, for a sports bike. Does feel quite heavy getting her off the stand. But I've had a lot worse. Alrighty, let's get this show back on the road. Alright, can you see me okay? Looking good. Oh man, it's so good to be back out on the bikes again after the uh, easing of lockdown restrictions. It's been such a cracking summer so far. Oh, a bit of breeze, it's uh, it's about 27 degrees today. Unusually warm for this time of year, I'm filming this in late May. Absolutely glorious day to be out of the bike. 
Hi, just a quickie, we'll be back to the main video in a moment. Lots of people have been asking me, whereabouts can you get the uh, t-shirts, hoodies, etc., that you sometimes see me wearing here on the channel? Well, they come from our website, that's www.themissendonflyer.com, uh, and there not only can you get the uh, t-shirts and hoodies, but you can get sweatshirts, you can get mugs, you can get stickers, and there's all sorts of new stuff being added in the future as well. So it's well worth checking that out. Not only is my merchandise there, uh, but also there's lots of articles, information on my bikes, my contact details, all that kind of stuff. So it's well worth checking out. That's www.themissendonflyer.com. All right, let's get back to the main video. One of those cops I was talking to just now asked me what the uh, top speed of the bike was. Luckily, I said, I don't know, I've never tried it. <laughs> Which, of course, I haven't, so it's completely true. But uh, I quite like that. That was one of those typical cop trick questions. That wasn't really an only joke, of course. It oh, it's got a bit of air on the face, I hope you still hear me. So yeah, this is an absolutely cracking bike and a real practical proposition actually, even to this day. It's not so powerful that uh, you know, you're going to ride around like a hooligan all the time. And it really is a beautiful thing to ride, it's pretty comfortable, it's smooth, it looks lovely, it's a classic. Absolute winner. Fancy one of these, by the way. Stick around, stay tuned to the end of the video. I'll tell you how you can win this very bike. Okay, so that's the Honda VTR 1000 SP1. Uh, what an amazing bike. 20 years later, I still think it looks really sharp. And as you saw, it rides absolutely, or rides absolutely beautifully as well. A uh, couple of organisations I must say thank you for. Number one, Motorcycle News, MCN, they produced an article recently about the SP1 versus the 996. It was an amazing article, and that's where I got a lot of the information for this film from. So thank you to those guys. Uh, and then I must also say thank you very much to Bennett's Insurance, my sponsor, who actually provided me with this bike. They, uh, they own this bike, and they're actually giving this bike away as well at the end of the year if you want to be in with the chance of winning this very machine and i very much think it's well worth winning uh, then do check out the link below in the description uh, click on that link and then you can go and find out how you can win this bike all right good luck with that and uh, i look forward to speaking to you again soon until then this has been the mist and fly cheerio so what i hear you ask well under the world superbike rules of the time uh 250 uh, so the Pat So the Ducati 996 was a V4 uh that wasn't So the Ducati 996 at the time let's do it again So Honda decided to prove a point and uh let's do it again Okay, so Honda decided they were going to uh, teach Ducati a lesson and come up with their own V-twin race bike. So what they did was took their existing uh, uh L-twin so Honda decided they were going to teach Ducati a lesson and come up with their own V-twin motorcycle. So what they did uh, was took their existing V-twin in the shape of the, oh, that's rubbish, race bike uh, of the TL1000. Oh, that's rubbish, one more time. So uh, that, as I say, was seen as a little bit of a hollow victory, which was a shame. The next year, it didn't win. It came second, I think. Mm. Yes, we don't know that. World Superbike Championship, effectively cementing its uh, place in the... Uh, history of motorcycle racing. One more time. So how did the bike fare on the racetrack? Well, in the 2000 World Superbike Series, this machine actually won the race. It's in, or the chat, let's do it again. Because their main competitor, Cole Fogarty, on the 996, unfortunately, had a crash in the season. It pretty much took him out of the whole race series. Uh, so as I say, it was, oh, that's rubbish. Let's go with the one that I did before.